Welcome back geeks and gamers and happy new year! In this episode today I'm going to show you how to perfectly set up a Raspberry Pi 4, at least according to my needs and preferences. Roll the intro! So what do we need? First of all, of course, a Raspberry Pi 4. This is the 4 GB model. Then, of course, we need some memory cards. 16 GB is just a sweet spot. Any major brand should do. Don't go with something cheap or stupid. Then, of course, we need a power supply for the Raspberry Pi 4. This is the original one. It's pretty good. But it does not have a switch to turn the Raspberry Pi on and off. So there are third-party USB-C power adapters. Like this one. And it has a little switch which helps you power on and off the Raspberry Pi. And of course we want our Raspberry Pi 4 to look amazing. So we need a case. And this is my go-to case. The Argon Pi 4 case. It's pretty awesome. And if you go with a normal Raspberry Pi power supply, this case includes a on-off button, which is awesome. Just what we need. And for input, we need a mouse and keyboard, but I'm going with this one, which is the Logitech K400 keyboard, which includes a touchpad on the side so we don't need an additional mouse. Okay, let's put it all together. Okay, let's start with the case. Crank it open. We need a screwdriver. Oh, come on. And there you have it. Small menu. The top. Uh, the case includes a fan. And those two towers will fit onto the Raspberry Pi to cool the CPU and the chipset. We've got thermal pads, a little breakout board or add-on board, which will be really handy and useful in a moment, and the feet of the case. The breakout board basically goes into the Raspberry Pi. Come on. And takes all the connections like audio and micro HDMI and puts them out on the other side. Where there are the openings on the case. Okay, let's grab the Raspberry Pi and attach the breakout board. Should fit in here. Nice and snug. Bit of pushing. Oh, more pushing than I expected. But here we go. Now we're ready to put it in the case with the thermal pads. Okay, let's attach the thermal pads. I remove the film. One goes on this tower. And the other one goes on this. There's self-adhesive and just stick on there. Now we need to move the film, protective film from those and put in the board. Give me a second. Okay, I managed to get rid of the film on the thermal pads with my fat fingers. Now this goes in here like this. Should all fit nice and snug. The GPIO goes in there. Come on, pins. Yep, that's it. Time to put in some screws and close it. Okay, make sure to use the short screws inside and the long screws for the lid of the case. I almost screwed it up. Haha. 
No pun intended. And then the case is finished. Just need to attach the rubber feet. The GPIO comes out here. Nice. It's a magnetic lid. And the IO is on the back. Dual micro HDMI. Audio, tons of USB, Ethernet, and USB-C for powering it up. And it has a little power button. Awesome. I used the micro HDMI to HDMI cable to connect the Pi to the monitor. And there you have it. What a nice little setup. The ducks are of course optional. Now all we need to do is put the micro SD card into a card reader and plug that into any PC or Mac available and prepare the card with an operating system for the Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's do it. Okay, before we start with the OS installation, let me quickly elaborate on why we do not use the default Raspberry Pi OS, formerly known as Raspbian. First of all, the desktop environment looks like shit, to be honest. It looks and feels like a 10 year old operating system. Only advantage is that it is quite lightweight. The default installation also comes with software you might never need and just uses up space on the memory card. Furthermore, the default Chromium has issues with the audio output on HDMI for, in, for example playing back YouTube videos. You don't believe me? Listen to this and don't forget, this is what you get with an out of the box installation. I only updated all the software packages. Sounds terrible, right? Yes, I tried every single hack and Google suggestion, but nothing helped. I finally came up with a radical solution, which I will show you when we are doing our step-by-step -step installation in a moment. Are you ready? Let's get cracking! Visit raspberrypi.org on your Mac or PC and select software in the menu at the top of the page. We will use the official Raspberry Pi Imager software to retrieve the operating system for a Raspberry Pi. So smash that download button, wait for the download to finish and start the executable. Press the install button and click next till the installation has finished. Leave the check mark to start the software automatically. Press the Choose OS button and you will be presented with a list of possible installations. We don't want the normal installation, the Raspberry Pi OS, but choose the second option, Raspberry Pi OS Other, and then the Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Now click Choose SD Card. You should be presented with a list of possible cards. Identify yours. It should show the correct name and size. Now. Press the right button. The software will automatically format, partition and set up your SD card. It will download the image to install on your Raspberry Pi and write it to the card. Remove the card from the SD card reader, plug it into your Raspberry Pi and turn it on. The first boot will take a moment to show something on screen, so please be patient. The Pi will set up some stuff in the background and resize the file system on the SD card so the full capacity is available to the OS. In the end you should be presented with this login screen. The default user is Pi with the password Raspberry. Caution, the default keyboard layout is American. So Z and Y might be swapped. We will change this now. Type sudo dpkg reconfigure keyboard configuration and press enter. If you have a normal keyboard like most of us, choose the 105 keys. Then choose your language accordingly. For me that was German the default for the keyboard layout, no compose key, and no, we don't need that feature. If you want to use the Wi-Fi on your Raspberry Pi, perform the following steps. 
execute sudo respy config. We need to configure the country we are in so the Wi-Fi adapter only uses frequencies that are allowed. Choose localization options and set the country where you are in. We can now quit this tool and scan for possible Wi-Fi networks. Your network should show up in the list of possible networks. Now we only need to connect to it. Execute the following command to edit the WPA supplicant configuration file, which basically contains all the information needed to connect to your Wi-Fi. Add the network section as shown in the video, but replace the SSID with yours and of course the password with your password. Save the file. Hit Ctrl X for exit and yes to save it. Reboot the Raspberry Pi with the shutdown minus R now and when it's back up, log in again. Now let's update the software of the Raspberry Pi to the latest versions. Execute sudo apt update to retrieve a list of possible updates. Basically it retrieves a list of packages that are available with the latest version numbers and compares them to the versions installed. As you can see there are updates available. 30 packages can be upgraded. Execute sudo apt dist upgrade to perform the upgrade. This will take a moment depending on your internet speed, so please be patient. I sped this up here in the video, so we don't have to wait. Ok, now it's time to install our desktop environment. A better looking one than the default one of course. Execute sudo apt install xfce4 light dm. This will install the xfce desktop environment and light dm as the display manager. This will take a moment. Once again I sped up the video so we don't have to wait. If you experience black bars around the screen like I do, execute the following command sudo nano boot config text. Now find the line that says disable Oh, disable overscan one. Now find the line that says disable overscan and uncomment it. Press Ctrl X, Y to save and exit. Time to restart the Pi. Here we go, no more black bars, awesome. And we should end up in our freshly installed desktop environment. Oh yeah, here we are. Log in with the user pi and the password raspberry. Check out the terminal. Oh, a terminal, but it looks terrible, doesn't it? We want an XFC4 terminal. We will install that in a moment, but check out the virtual workspaces on top. That's nice. Execute sudo apt install XFC4 terminal to get a better version of this. Close this terminal and restart it from the taskbar at the bottom and well, this looks much better. Yeah. As this was a very minimal installation, we don't even have a browser yet. So let's change that. Execute sudo apt install chromium browser. As always, be patient. The installation might take a moment and depends on the speed of your internet connection. So, what else are we missing? I guess we need some audio mixer. There should be an XFC4 mixer app, but oh, uh, no, it's not. But Debian tells us it has been replaced by the following package Pi Mixer. Okay, let's install that one sudo apt install pymixer. mixer. 
Let's start PyMixer by typing PyMixer in the terminal. And as you can see, there is uh, the output is set to HDMI 1, which is good. Select controls for HDMI, enable them. It's at 100%, okay, and make it default. Okay. So far, so good. Now for the bad news. Audio in Chromium is still broken. So we need to fix it in a radical way. We're going to remove the Pulse Audio and we're going to install ALSA. Basically, we're replacing one audio framework with another one. So just follow along and execute the commands in the shell as I do. Let's also uninstall anything related to Pulse Audio. There might be this library from GStreamer. Let's see if we have to remove it. Uh, GStreamer 0.10 Pulse Audio. Execute and... Uh, no, no, it wasn't installed anyway. That's good. Okay, let's install Alsa. And also some additional ELSA stuff, like ELSA tools. Once again, this might take a moment, depending on your internet speed. As we just replaced the whole audio system of the operating system, it's time for a reboot. Zudu shut down minus R now. And here we go. Some seconds later, it should be presented with a login screen. Relogin, Pi, and Raspberry as the password. Okay, time to test. Okay, start Chromium. But before we head over to YouTube, we need to do something else. We need to install a plugin called H264Refy. Basically, it forces YouTube to send us H264 encoded videos, which are lightweight to decode for the Raspberry Pi. I always pin that extension to the top of Chrome, so I can access the options easily. But does it help? Let's crank up that video from before and listen carefully. As you can see, or here, this is a night and day difference, isn't it? Okay, stay tuned for the next video in this Raspberry Pi series. This video was made possible because of you. Don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, ring that bell to get notifications, it all helps. But if you feel super awesome today, join me on Patreon. And, as always, stay safe, friends.